There are two types of dives in Bampton, a half dive and a full dive. And in this video, we're gonna explain when to do each of these and how to do them effectively without getting injured. Yeah, now despite being a professional badminton player, I've actually never dived before. So to put our explanations to the test, I'm gonna learn with you guys. And hopefully I'll be able to do both of these dives successfully by the end of the video. Now you might be thinking, Jenny is a professional badminton player and she doesn't dive, so why do I need to? Well, there are three main benefits of diving and if Jenny could dive, she might have won more matches over the years because of these benefits. That could well be true. So firstly, diving and getting the shuttle back will keep you in a valley that you might have lost otherwise. This also shows your opponent it's very difficult for them to hit winning shots against you, which forces them to try and play their next shot or shots with even more precision and potentially make a mistake as a result. And thirdly, this can give you a mental edge, enabling you to win more points in the next few rallies too. Yes, yeah, so unlike football, diving in Bampton could be a good thing. So let's start with our first type of dive. Jenny, are you ready? No, not that type of dive. So the half dive is mainly used when you're defending in singles often when your opponent has smashed down the side and you aren't able to reach the shuttle with your normal footwork. So instead, you do a half dive. So, Greg is now gonna take us through the steps to learn this. Firstly, like you should always be in your defense, you need to be low in your stance, and then you perform an explosive split step to push off in whichever direction you're moving to. The next step is to transition into a side lunge position with your back leg straight and your racket reaching out. If you're moving to your forehand side, your racket leg will be in front of you, and if you're moving to your backhand side, it will be your non-racket leg in front of you. Have you got that? Yeah. But surely I'll be hitting the shuttle now. Correct, but you need to get three things right. Firstly, because you don't have much time, you need to have a short swing. And because you need a short swing, you need to rely on your wrist and fingers to create the control and power in the shot. And finally, to maximize your reach, you need a straight arm. Yeah, I think I've got all that. Straight arm, short swing, and using your wrist and fingers. Now, before we get into the recovery and how to practice this, we need to quickly mention what shots you'd play from this position. When we were doing our research for this video, 93% of the half dives we saw were performed when a player's opponent had played a shot from the back of the court. And you'd therefore assume that the best shot to play is a block to the net. Funnily enough, this is what we saw the majority of the pros do. They blocked 90% of the time. And we'd also advise playing a block as it's really hard to generate enough power from this position to play a lift, even for us pros. Oh, so hard to generate enough power. Now, assuming you're not hitting a winning shot, the final step is landing and then recovering quickly. Yeah, I'm not sure how I'll be at this. So you'll watch some pros like Lee Chong Wei who could keep his legs straight and almost do a press up to recover. But we wouldn't actually recommend this technique as not many people are as strong, fast, or even as light as he was. There is another technique that we would recommend though. And this is to land with both of your arms bent to cushion your landing and prevent any elbow injuries. You then use your momentum to spin your legs round. You should either end up facing forwards if you're moving to your forehand side and actually facing almost backwards if you're moving to your backhand side. And then from this position, you can quickly stand back up and recover. Okay, I think I need some practice doing this. What would you suggest, coach? Well, because a dive is largely done on adrenaline and in a desperate attempt to get the shuttle back, it's going to be a lot more difficult to practice than most shots, but we'll give it a go. We're sure everyone wants to see your attempts. So diving practice number one is to work on the landing we've just done. And this is gonna help you become comfortable with it and able to progress onto the next practice. So what Greg's gonna do is throw a shuttle down so it's just out of my reach and I need to think about my landing and recovery back onto my feet. Oh no. <laughs> I need to go like that. There we go. <laughs> Practice number two for this dive is to now add in the movement. And this enables you to get used to judging the distance and timing of your shot. And remember, you don't want to dive when you don't need to. So again, make sure it is out of reach. Oh, 
Okay, I think she's got it. And we're now able to move on to the third and final practice. And this is to do it in an open routine. So 2v1 is usually good, where you have a feeder at the back and also a feeder at the net. The feeder at the back can hit attacking shots, forcing you to do a half dive, and then you block to the feeder at the net before lifting again and repeating this. And it's important that you don't try and play it too tight to begin with. This quality will come with practice over time. Now, what happens if you still can't get the shuttle back doing this, or the shuttle comes in front of you? Well, this is when you need to go to the extremes and learn the full dive. I'm a lot more scared about this one though. I might need this. And before we move on, if you're enjoying me putting my body on the line for this video, please give it a like and smash the subscribe button. Okay, on to the full dive. So the full dive is usually used when your opponents have played a shot in front of you or a smash to the side of you. And again, you don't think you can reach a shuttle with your normal movement or even a half dive. So instead, you launch yourself forwards in a desperate attempt to get the shot back. But how do you do this whilst playing a good shot and without getting injured? Firstly, you push off from whatever position you're in when you realize you need to dive. And from watching many clips of myself and others diving, there doesn't seem to be one exact way of pushing off. It really depends on what position you're in and where you're moving to. But what everyone did do was a very powerful first push off. So from this first push off, you should jump into the air like Superman. And in some scenarios, you might need an extra push off before doing your jump. Okay, Jenny, are you ready to practice this push off and jump? Yeah, but I might need this. <laughs> Okay, so Jenny's practices have shown an important point. You don't want to jump too high as the shuttle will be low to the ground. So you need to take the direct route there. Plus, if you jump too high, then you have a good chance of getting winded when you land. More on that in a minute. Yeah, so similar to the half dive, you need to have an outstretched arm and short swing using your fingers to create the power. If you're diving forwards and blocking the shot, you won't need to generate much power because the momentum of your dive will create this for you. You will need to generate power if you're trying to lift the shuttle though, which is something we'd actually advise doing from the full dive. And this is for two reasons. Firstly, as you're taking it this late, your opponent or opponents would probably be moving forwards towards the net expecting a loose shot. They therefore might not be expecting a lift. And the second reason is that lifting gives you a lot more time to recover. If you're playing doubles, it also allows time for your partner to process your incredible full length dive and cover you in the next shot. Having said this, if there is space at the front of the court, then you can play a block. Again, it's really nice to hit a winning shot from your dive or even just go on to win the point. Now, after you've hit your shot, it's all about having a smooth landing so that you can get up quickly and also don't get injured or winded. Yeah, this is the bit I'm most worried about. So you need to land with your non-racket arm hand and racket arm forearm first to cushion your landing. And then your entire body should hit the floor at the same time to spread out the impact. If you land on your chest, you'll get winded. If you land directly on your hips, you'll get cuts. Your knees, it'll be painful and so on. So from what I've seen, I need to then adjust my arms and almost do a press up to get back to my feet while seeing what's going on in the rally. This seems like the easy bit, but let's just check. So how do you actually practice the full dive coach? Well, this is even more difficult to practice than the half dive if you're not in a match scenario because it's based on instinct. But we do have one practice for you. And if you do have a crash mat, we'd recommend starting with this. So for this practice, the worker shadows a rear court shot and you then throw the shuttle into the forecourt for them to do a full dive and hopefully get it back. <laughs> okay, I think we might need some more practice first. Okay, that was difficult. After reflecting, the most difficult part was practicing what is an instinctive shot. 
And for anyone watching who's too scared to take the jump and actually do these dives, well, that was me a few hours ago. But after learning it step by step and practicing with the crash mat, it definitely wasn't as scary as I first thought. And I think that's why I've never done it in a match before. I hadn't learned how to do it, so I didn't trust myself to do it. Now the question is, Jenny, are we going to see it in a match anytime soon? I'm going to try. So if you don't already follow us on Instagram, then dive down to the description where we'll include the link to our page, as we'll definitely post that if it happens. When it happens. <laughs> One final point. As we mentioned at the start, this definitely isn't a shot you need to learn. There are a lot of professional players out there that have never dived in their life. Instead, they rely on their footwork and a really deep lunge. So if you want to improve your footwork, then check out this playlist here. And thank you to those of you that asked for this video. We hope you found it useful.